I feel uh, extremely privileged to be addressing a group of people committed to making things better. Um, and I also feel extremely intimidated by the responsibility of being explicitly asked to come here to inspire. So I'm not going to accept that responsibility and I'm going to start with a disclaimer um, that I don't have any advice to give anyone in this room or any young person uh, actually around the country. All I have is my own story. Um, I've had the privilege of leading an incredibly full life and starting two ventures myself. And so what I thought I'd do today is take you through a few numbers, as you can see, um, which represent important pieces of my life. Um, and hopefully you'll leave with an idea, a question, a concern, something to think about. So my first number is 12. And this is actually when I think about when the seed of the idea of what I wanted to do with my life started in my life, it goes back to when I was 12 years old. So 12 was my age. Um, when I wrote a very silly little poem, but remember I was 12. Um, so this is the poem, and I think embedded in the poem was the idea that I wanted to do something different. So the poem reads, I reached to touch a rainbow today. I reached up high, so high. And yet as high as I reached up, I could not touch the sky. I'll reach to touch a rainbow again. I'll reach up higher than high. And if I try to reach up high, I just may skim the sky. So jump, jump forward to when I was 18, lived the first 18 years of my life outside of India. I had everything possible um, that a child could possibly have, a great education, a wonderful family, enough money to do whatever we wanted to do. And at 18, I was back in India on a holiday. I had completed my first year at Tufts University in the US, and I was supposed to go back and rejoin my second year. And I just decided one day not to go back. And there's a long story around what sort of led to that. But the first thing that I did um, when I decided to stay in India was I walked into a slum community in Mumbai. And I had a camera with me on that first day. And this is a real picture of the first child that I ever met. Um, and her name is Pinky. And I don't know where Pinky is today. And I don't know what she's doing. But something about Pinky haunted me. Her eyes, you can't see too well in the picture, but she had these big, sparkling, bright eyes. And as I walked through the community in my naive way, expecting to be depressed, expecting to be frustrated and angry by the poverty, what I didn't realize is that the eyes of Pinky and the kids that I met were so full of potential. And that potential spoke so much louder than any of the problems that I saw in the community. And I think that's the moment where I decided that my vision for my own life is to maximize my own potential, because I think that's possibly the hardest thing that any of us can do, and then to maximize the potential of as many people as I can around me. And so I started this very informal college project which grew into something called Akanksha. Um, we didn't even have a real goal or a real idea. It wasn't even connected to education in the beginning. Um, I used to use, when I spoke about it, the line from a song uh, sung by Ziggy Marley which really said, give a little love, have a little hope, make this world a little better. I think that's what I initially believed that I wanted to be a little bit a part of. This girl, I want you to remember her because I'm going to come back to her in a few minutes. I started teaching her when she was three years old. Um, her name is Parveen um, and she was a, an absolutely incredible kid. If you see in the beginning, we didn't have money uh, for anything, including printing t-shirts. So till there were 300 kids in the Akanksha program, we would hand paint t-shirts. Um, our mission was really simple. We said there are so many young people that have time and skills. 
skills and the potential to do something. And on the other hand, there's so many kids that need to be educated. Let's just put the two together. Very, very simple idea. Many things in those early days really shaped my commitment to this for life. And, and there were many, many stories in the community. I'm just gonna tell you one. This little girl, her name was Gitanjali, and she was six. And she studied in class, and her best friend in the world who would sit next to her in class every day was a girl called Barki. And one day, Barki's mother set fire to Gitanjali's mother. And Gitanjali's mother sustained 80% burns. She passed away. Barki's mother was put into prison for life. So these two girls overnight were left without a mother, but more fundamentally, with a life ahead of them where they needed to come to terms with something like this. And I thought about that and I said, how do we live in a world that allows this, that allows our children to go through this? Why can't we do something to make it better? Again, when we started, we had no, I didn't know the first thing about teaching. I didn't know the first thing about education. This is a real image from our first attendance register where you can see many more absence than presents. The kids wouldn't come to school. Um, they would come when we asked them not to learn, but to have a bath because there was no running water in the community at that time. So they'd run into the school, jump into the basins in the bathroom, and come like soaking back uh, to class. And then time moved on. And I'm going to show you um, a short video that shows how Akanksha grew. But really, what we realized working with kids is that really out of everything that needs to change, if you can teach kids how to think, they can really do the rest. They can change their lives. So we became very, very invested in this idea that it is not just education, but an excellent education that will give our kids the choices that they need to live whatever life they want. So I'm going to just stop and show you this short video.